not ready to pitch for some reasons. They learn a lot from uh, watching uh, the recording sessions and uh, understanding what questions do investors ask and so on and so forth. So yeah, we are live now. And uh, one more time, uh, welcome everyone, uh, those that are watching us live on YouTube or LinkedIn right now. And of course, uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone in this Zoom session. And uh, as usually, uh, before each uh, of the in mind pitch tank sessions, I will introduce first in VC investors that are listening to the startup pitches today and hopefully getting uh, the new deal flow. And uh, I will ask each and every investor one by one shortly, in, please introduce uh, your founder or yourself as an investor and uh, your investment focus to understand uh, um, what is your priority you're looking for in the startups. Uh, and uh, I want to give the word uh, to uh, Oscar Stachowiak uh, from the Untitled Ventures. And by the way, congratulations, Oscar. Uh, he just uh, closed the fund of 100 million uh, and uh, it was announced loudly. So Oscar, uh, we, you participated Thank in the session, uh, but for the new guys, please introduce yourself. So, yes, thank you very much, Nelly, uh, and, and uh, thank you for having me on. We, uh, this is actually our first external fund. We were angel, three angel investors working together. We built our own fund and had several exits, uh, and now we're upping the game with a much, much bigger fund, $100 million, and uh, focusing on AI um, uh, data management, uh, robotics, and uh, industry 4.0, uh, med tech, and and uh, agri agri tech, but actually anything to do with food and SaaS uh, models. Obviously, can cut across any of those types of uh, uh, let's say verticals. Awesome, Oscar. Thank you my, uh, very much for this uh, brief intro. And uh, yeah, you are. Uh, I guess, yeah, all, all the three other investors are the new uh, comers in our sessions, but uh, you already know everything and how it goes. Thank you very much for your commitment and contribution on these sessions. Um, and right now I want to give a word to Cormac Ledget uh, from Sabadell Venture Capital. Cormac, please. So Thank you for the opportunity to, to get to know you guys and, and the companies that we'll be presenting today. Uh, my name is, is Cormac Leggett. I deal with venture debt investments at Sabadei Venture Capital, a fund that belongs to Banco Sabadei, which is a Spanish retail bank. Uh, we originally launched our equity investments division in 2015 and the venture debt facility in 2017. So our, our approach is basically agnostic. Well, obviously we're looking for technology enabled companies, but basically agnostic. And our tickets range between 250K and 2 million euros. Uh, our geography is mainly Spain, although that might be changing in the short term and we're looking to invest in, in other European markets. Perfect. And you are corporate venture capital. Uh, so you align uh, with the business processes of the bank, right? So not necessarily. Uh, we're just looking for a purely a financial return on our investments. Uh, obviously, if there can be some integration with the bank or something that enhances the, the, um, the bank's performance, we'll, we'll look into it. But our, our mandate is just to produce a good return on the, on the money that we're, we're managing. Perfect. Thanks a lot for elaboration. Thank you, Cormac. You're and I want, I, I want to give a word to present uh, Daniel Chenner from Capnamic Ventures. Daniel? Yeah, thanks a lot. Also, thanks a lot for the invite. Um, my name is Daniel. I'm with Capnamic Ventures. It's a Germany-based VC predominantly focusing on highly scalable B2B software solution in pretty much any vertical with ticket sizes between 250,000 euros and 5 million initial investment. And geographically, speak, geographically speaking, we predominantly invest in European startups, whereby the focus is on Germany, of course, Austria and Switzerland. And yeah, now I'll make a full stop, stop talking and look very much forward to the pitches also to the exchange. 
Danielle, thanks a lot for this uh, very laconic intro. And uh, yeah, your focus completely matches with the focus of today's session, B2B SaaS startups. Uh, and uh, I want to give the word last but not least among investors today, Matteo Leonardi from Italian Angels. Matteo. Hi, hi. Yes, thank you for, for the opportunity. It's a pleasure being here. I represent uh, IAG, um, which is basically a group of the biggest and largest uh, business angel group in Italy. Uh, we basically act as a VC, um, co-investing in, in uh, fintech deals and uh, enterprise software deals across Europe with um, many uh, institutional investors and other syndicates. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure being here and thanks again for the invitation. And you invest not only in Italian startups, but yeah, all all across the world with uh, with a, a focus on European startups specifically. Okay, very unusual for angel organizations. Thanks a lot for joining, Matteo. And before we switch to the startup pitching set uh, pitching session, uh, as it is, uh, I want to give the word also to our special partner today. We have uh, a partner, VC Land. They are not. VC and uh, not uh, so much uh, a startup. They are not fundraising, but they make some great uh, stuff, a great product for venture capitalists. And uh, I think uh, Eduardo Salorio, head of growth, can, and Alessandro Scarole can elaborate very shortly about what they are doing to present themselves to the community. Yeah, sure. I'm actually here with uh, Luis instead of Eduardo, that is the CEO. So I'll leave the word to him first. I'll share my screen with the presentation and we'll, we'll keep it brief, okay? Awesome, yeah. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yes, we want to let you know about VCLAN. VCLAN is a, is a product that comes, if you, go, if you want to go next, uh, Alessandro, that we started a couple of years ago inside a global incubator that is a technology company. Uh, and we started helping venture capitals and private equities at the beginning here in Spain to automatize all their operations. Uh, historically, Global Incubator, we've been more than 10 years developing technologies for, for big corporations all around the world uh, with a big focus in innovation and fintech. And, and currently, if you go next, Alessandro. Currently, we have the, some top uh, venture capital funds here in Spain that we, we service, all of them very, very happy and with an uh, with, with NPS of 100%. And, and at the moment, we save them many hours a, a, a quarter uh, that they usually spend in Excel spreadsheets and, and working on templates. And they now automatize all their operations. And uh, we also, I mean, we automatize all the fun all the fund management and also the portfolio, the portfolio companies. So now if you go next, uh, Alessandro will show you a, a very quick demo and hopefully after this meeting, we will be more than happy to, to, to schedule a call with all of you that, uh, to, to go deeper in detail. Yeah, so as Luis mentioned, we're, we are a big back office automation platform we help the fund managers to manage their day-to-day -day tasks in terms of, for example, fund operations, portfolio management, LPs management and reporting. We have analyzed with some venture capital funds here in Spain, what were their day-to-day -day frictions and what, what was causing troubles or for example, errors in their daily activities. And we have tried with them to automatize all these operations. Now we are commercializing the software uh, in Europe and we're trying to also expand outside of Europe. So as we said before, we are helping them automatize or the, the whole fund life cycle. So we start, for, for example, with the subscription process. We have digital signatures. We have, for example, digital identity verification. And they can seamlessly uh, complete this whole process within the platform. Then in terms of, for example, LPs management, we, have the, we offer them tables where they can see all the operations of the investors or download documents and upload capital accounts automatically. Everything is fully customizable because we have seen that at the end of the day, VCs, it's the same sector, but each of them have their own peculiarities in terms of calculations and so on. So we have built a powerful engine capable of adapting to the different uh, necessities of each fund. And we also offer a data room using the highest well, uh, industry uh, standards in terms of security, 
Uh, we have worked with many fintech companies like um, Santander, Santander, for example. And so we use the highest level of security in terms of data and in terms of document sharing and so on. In terms of fund operations, as we mentioned before, we managed to um, create the whole flow within the platform. For example, a capital call can be created in just a couple of minutes and send out all the notices which are automatically generated within the platform. Same we can do also with the portfolio operations, for, the, for example. So we can just record an operation within the platform and all the indicators will be calculated automatically. And if, for example, uh, we offer a set of around 200 indicators, which are already calculated within the platform, and if a fund, for example, needs some different um, KPIs or whatever, they have a no-code tool where they can just give us the formula and we'll start um, calculating it automatically. And then at the end, we have also a simulation tool where you can copy the whole database of the fund and run any type of operation in terms of portfolio or fund operations and see how this would affect the real fund without actually, without actually affecting the real fund. It would be like duplicating an Excel, keeping one with the real data and the other one to play around with the data. And to conclude, uh, we are fully appified, meaning that every manager, fund manager that, for example, starts using the platform will have an API manager already connected to, to well, some main companies, as we can see here, electronic identification, signature, and all funds to distribute their fund. And we give them the possibility to use this API manager to connect with any other platform, which could be helpful to basically complete their tech stack. And um, well, this would be a super fast introduction on what we do and who we are. Uh, we're used to uh, much longer demos. So I've tried to put all the information within a couple of minutes. And um, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, happy to keep the conversation going with any of you if you'd be interested. And these are our contact details. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alessandra and Luis. You can stop your presentation right now. And I want to underline to all the investors that if you are interested to get more details, let us know. We will gladly introduce you with the founders after the session, both, of course, the founders of the startups and with the VC land if you need this solution. Uh, and I want to switch to the startups pitches. Uh, well, we have here investors from Spain, we have here VC land from Spain. So let's start from the Spanish startup, uh, Optimus Price uh, with the co-founder, Xavier Tuz. Xavier, are you here? Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. Okay, perfect. I hear you well, I see you well. Please start. I just remind uh, to you, Xavier, and to all the founders today, guys, you have five minutes and I have unfortunately to calculate time, but then okay. uh, if uh, you uh, don't, uh, if you miss something, uh, you can elaborate it during Q&A with uh, investors. Please go on. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invite and all you for attending today. My name is Xavier Tous. I'm Optimus Price General Manager and Co-Founder. And today we would like to show you what we think the future of retail is going to be. Pricing products is tricky. Maybe a lot of you think that companies nowadays is using sophisticated tools, but the truth is that most stores is still using Excel to set prices. Please note that 1% increase in price can cause a 10% improvement in profit. But be careful because it also works the other way. A simple typo or price error can cause a big problem. I'm sure that most of you have seen that kind of news in the media. Police trying to clear supermarket after a price error. So what we think is the best way to increase profit and increase margins for a store is to use an automated, automated an intelligent system that is constantly updating prices. In 2020, pricing software has been, uh, has increased its demand 75%. It's like a record. I mean, a lot of people is looking for that kind of software. Um, unfortunately, that kind of software, pricing software nowadays is, is very expensive and difficult to use. 
Retailers, we think that need a solution that is smart, automated, and affordable. This solution is Optimus Price. Optimus Price is a software as a service that allows stores to increase their profits, save time, and avoid mistakes without effort. For doing that, we have four models that integrate all pricing processes. We have a high quality competitor monitoring. We have unique AI models to calculate the optimal price with demand prediction and stock optimization with stock out alerts and procurement planning. And we also have promotions, optimization, and Google Shopping to maximize sales and optimize ads budget. Optimus Price scales from growing companies to multinationals. Customers nowadays are very, very happy with our solution. Ulabox has increased margins by 10%, which is a lot for a supermarket. And Football Emotion now has their prices automated thanks to our solution. We have many great testimonials like Sonai and Nestlé. And the best thing is what our clients says about, say about us. They say that Optimus Pi price pays for itself. Optimus Price was founded by researchers of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and serial entrepreneurs. The company is backed by Weira, Telefonica, and the top two business angels in Spain. The team has three PhDs, two MBAs, five patents, and as you can see, is growing like a rocket. The last 18 months, we have grown um, uh, 18 times in MRR. And nowadays we are in a funding round looking for 1 million. We have half of that amount already committed. And with that money, the next 12 months, we want to multiply by three our MRR, duplicating our sales team, reduce our CAC, making even more automated the onboardings and increase the actual contract value of our customers upselling new features. If you're asking why us or why now, I can tell you that we are the company because we have a unique AI tech that scales with three years ahead of our competitors. We have an experience and skill team and we are growing with top international customers like Nestlé or eBay. Additionally, the time is now. The world has changed and retail is becoming omnichannel. COVID has dramatically increased e-commerce and the pricing as a category is emerging. We strongly believe that everybody will use a pricing tool the coming years. We want every store in the world to set their prices using Optimus Price. We bring artificial intelligence to retail, but for everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Xavier. Actually, you did it uh, within uh, four and a half minutes. Amazing. And okay. I really loved your pitch. Let's see what investors say. But uh, just uh, for start, I see that question in the chat uh, from Team IAG. So what is Team IAG? Uh, yes, it's, it's me. Uh, oh, sorry about that, but uh, I can't change my name. Uh, OK, sorry, Matteo. OK, no uh, yeah, it happens sometimes in Zoom. So Matteo is asking, could you please provide some more details on the traction? Yeah, I can. Here you have, um, nowadays we have 33 clients. Um, we have already done two upsells because we have different features that our customers are progressively uh, adding to, to their ticket. And we have been with a 15% average monthly over monthly growth over the last two years. We have very good ratios in terms of funnel um, where 25% of our proposal finishing in, in closing. And during the last 18 months, we have multiplied by 18 or our MRR. Okay, thank you. Can I follow up on this question or do you course, need to take course, some other questions? Uh, uh, we and... can continue you on Q&A, please. Okay, thank you. Um, and what, what is the average uh, contract type you sign? Uh, what's yeah. your, your, your typical client? Mm -hmm. Now we are focused in the mid-market. Our, our typical ticket is about 900, 1,000 euros. And this is the kind of, of customer that we are targeting nowadays. I can show you, for example, um, this is a different um, solutions that we offer. And now we are focused in the middle, in, in the one in the middle, uh, which are SMEs about 10 million euros. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your questions, Matteo. And uh, Oscar, Cormac, Daniel, do you have questions? Yeah. Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Oscar, please. All right, thank you. Um, in terms of the current traction, uh, I, I presume you started locally. And uh, so you have a lot of local uh, companies. What's the plan to roll out to other countries? Yeah, we started in terms of, of sales, very focused in Spain, but we have already uh, clients from five countries. We have clients in Portugal, Poland, Italy, uh, Spain, and Andorra. Uh, and what we're going to do with that money is to, to start opening different countries. And this is our target. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Oscar. Cormac, Daniel. I do have uh, also a question, Javier. Thanks, to, yeah. thanks first of all, for, for your presentation, for the pitch. Um, after the questions mainly have focused on the commercial side, I'm interested on the solution itself. What mm -hmm. kind of input do you take? Because you say you're providing the solution for pretty much any kind of vertical or any kind of product. And I'm interested, how do you get the data to form the machine learning model or feed into the machine learning model? Yeah, okay. Um, in fact, we, we gather information from outside the stores. That's what we, what we do in our competitor monitoring solution. But we also use information from our customer. Uh, not only historical data from sales, also we connect to Google Analytics to see uh, customers' behavior and different inputs that we can add to our machine learning models. Okay, thanks again. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Cormac, I've seen you unmuted yourself uh, a few times. Please go on with your question. Yeah, no, it was, my question was regarding uh, competition. Mm -hmm. And if you could describe the competitive landscape and what differentiates you, your solution. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, uh, we've seen an opportunity in what is uh, high-tech solutions for the middle market. Nowadays, sophisticated solutions are very focused in the top uh, left side of the axis that I am showing. Uh, this axis is made uh, of uh, with two dimensions. The first one, from top to down, it's uh, sophisticated AI tools. And in, in the down, you, you see no AI tools, in more easy, one single um, feature. And then uh, from, from, from left to right, you have enterprises and uh, small companies, okay? So um, what we have is a tool that offers uh, a solution in terms of, of sophistication and, and high tech uh, at, at the same level of the ones that now are focused for enterprises with a very high ticket, uh, the enterprise solutions, uh, uh, their typical yearly cost is about 300 keys. And we are offering that to the mid market for a, a typical yearly cost of 10, 10 K. Um, so this is uh, our, what, where we are posi positioning our, our company in terms of competitive advantage and in the market. Thank you. You're welcome. Matteo, you unmuted because you had another question. Uh, yes, uh, if you could provide some uh, more clarity on the round structure, what are the conditions of the round and how you're gonna use the money you're raising? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, uh, now we have uh, 500,000 euros already committed with a private round that we have, we have made. Um, and we want this money to grow. I mean, um, we are very focused to, to increase our sales team, uh, to entry to different countries. Um, and for doing that, we also want to uh, improve all the onboarding process and, and support to the, the sales team. And additionally, as I, I, I told you before, uh, we have uh, four models. So we have we have we have seen that that uh, the typical customer uh, tends to trends to to upsell, okay, to add different features. So uh, we are, will be also very focused at, at developing new features to be able to be upsell to, to our customers. 
Okay, that's that's clear on that part. And uh, what about the conditions of the round? So how much yeah. equity are you planning to give away? Hmm. Yeah, uh, the pre-money valuation is 4.5 million. And, and, and well, and this is the, the pre-money valuation that we have launched. So, so it's an equity around. round, yeah? Yeah, it's 100% it's equity round. Okay, got it, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to investors for great questions. And thank you, Xavier, really great job. And uh, if you allow, I even want to give a comment to all the startup founders here in the Zoom room and all those that are watching us online live right now that uh, at least in my experience, it was really good fit. All the core information is uh, delivered in the slides and there are also extra slides uh, to answer all additional questions to investors. So uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. So it's a good example. Uh, to follow uh, Xavier. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. I, I have to be neutral uh, and independent, but it's just a good example of well, really well delivered and well prepared pitch. And I remind to all the investors that, guys, if you see some interesting startup you would like to follow up later privately, so uh, we will send you right after this session an email with all the startup profiles and pitch decks and information from this session. And uh, let us know with whom of them you want to follow up. We will gladly introduce you directly uh, and uh, hopefully you can uh, discuss the round efficiently. And right now I want to give a word to the, another startup, Fintelect, and uh, the founder of Fintelect, Igor Balovsky. Igor, please. Hello, hi. Hi. Uh, Will you share your screen? Yes, I have a permission, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Is Great. it done? Yes, please go on. Great. Um, hi, my name is Igor Walowski, and me and my team are building Fintelect, an all-in-one financial super tool for small service firms. So let's take a look at one of those. Here is Max. He is founder, and he's managed to do his way from just an industry to own business and gain some initial success. But scaling it up forward is pain with problem. So uh, there's a couple of, of issues that Max is struggling with, like how to scale the business without the scaling the expenses. So how to measure and combine the metrics, like financial metrics in his head. So how to avoid cash gaps, which are there because it's the client business and sometimes it's not enough cash to pay. And how to avoid human factor, how to make finances not so time consuming and how to clean up the mess with the project because sometimes the edits and the way the process is done is eating up the project margin that is hard to imagine and hard to avoid. So it's not new and like many of the other service founders, uh, Max is the craftsman and not yet a real entrepreneur. And the thing is that craftsmen are quite bad at finances. So overwhelming majority of them are not able to track the exact profitability of the business, of their project, or to make up and read the financial statement. So most of them don't leave till the moment they hire the real CFO. And during this problematic phase of scaling the business, you need to figure out a lot of important financial challenges. So this is why we are building the Fintelect, a financial Swiss knife for small service firms. So is uh, this is the SaaS web app made specifically for this industry. Uh, our business statement is to make financial clear. Uh, so meaning that we want to have data translated and routine automated. We are different functionally from existing accounting solution because we are made for founders and not for financial managers, meaning that we have an accent for budget management section, prediction tools, and project section as well. So we help to do flexible budget because the business projection and avoiding cash gap is the usual routine for this kind of business. We also import the transaction use PSD to bank open banking protocol, meaning that we automate this piece of work. And also we have quite precise estimate and project tracking to know what's going on exactly and where you earn or lose the money till the last cent. Uh, we have an underlying magic in snack size analytics. So these are very sector specific, small widget that can give you a helicopter view on your finances at the different section of the app. 
So why this segment? This segment of the business is growing despite whatever. We can see that during the pandemic times, the number of core Upwork clients as the main service provider platform in the world has almost doubled, and it probably would grow even more. So if we're speaking about the market, we're looking at the SMBs worldwide, but we narrow down the service obtainable to key countries and service industry only. That stands for eight circa 8 million companies in the target countries. We divide them by two batches, depending on the acquisition cost, technical and legal risk, and the need for localization. So our team has quite a good balance of craftsmen and entrepreneur. Mostly these are the people that I have built a lot of complicated clients' IT solutions during my previous IT firm times. And we also have the guys from the advisory board that back us up with the global expertise from finances, banking, and SaaS and automation. So our go-to-market plan consists of two parts, we, uh, the MVP launch with an accent on the inbound and content channels, and the production launch, which um, contains of more scalable and countable tools a little bit later on. Our business vision is the subscription model. At first, we'll start with the personal and team plans with 15 and 30 bucks, but we want to move it towards the payment processing since we will be the financial decision center. And that goes for our exit target as well, because we want to be a complementary digital banking solution. And so we will be the place where the finances get planned, executed, and also the banking account will most likely be opened with us. We have, as we are the early stage startup, we have quite a modest traction uh, up to this day. So we have 30 design partners. These are the beta users that help us with uh, building the products and giving a lot of feedback and also buying the early subscription. We have 100 more of these firms in the wait list, which we migrate to the payment users right now. And we know our CPC and CPL. So the current... The current roadmap uh, is uh, the pre-MVP stage for now. We are working on the open banking integration right now, which will uh, appear quite closely. And we are integrating the project model, which will close and make our MVP more solid. We are launching it in mid Q4, doing some wide acquisition and later validating this whole segment of B2B service firms. That's it in a nutshell. Glad to answer your uh, answer your question and looking for the feedback. Thanks. Thank you, Igor, for your presentation. So please, questions from investors. Hi, um, Igor, this is Oscar. Um, maybe I missed it. Uh, how much are you looking for? So we're currently uh, raising our pre-seed round and we're looking at 200K euros with the one and a half to two pre-money evaluations. So this is our first round. We haven't been raised anything yet and we have self-funded self -funded till till this moment. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of the payment uh, and banking, uh, is there a, a regional focus that you are intending to do? I'm not sure if I got the question right. So uh, currently we have using the um, open European Open Banking PSD protocol uh, to fetch the information on the accounts and transaction. Uh, but uh, we are looking towards the option to trigger the payment from Fintelect as well. But you need a relationship with the bank itself, yeah? Um, and w w is there already a designated bank? It uh, we're using the uh, data providers, so we use the combination of Salt Edge and Nordigen. So these are the. That wasn't me. <laughs> uh, so Sorry, we use it. What my fault? Please continue replying. Yeah, we uh, use the combination of these two uh, data providers, and we are able to um, use their license for this kind of relation. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Oscar, for your question. And uh, I apologize. Uh, please uh, uh, forgive my stupid dog uh, for interrupting your discussion. Uh, next time, she will be more polite. Um, uh, any other questions from investors? Daniel, Matteo, Cormac? Uh, 
Yes, first of all, I would love to see your dog, uh, get to know him or her. But uh, I also have a question for Igor. Thanks again for the presentation, for, the, um, for, for seeing the deck. I have a question regarding the competition you showed, um, because as far as I'm informed, uh, the competition you showed is mostly engaging with enterprise customers, isn't it? Uh, my question would be, um, could you also, or were you able to identify direct competitors that also try to serve SMEs in the first place, um, smaller customers, and how do you uh, differentiate in that regard? Thanks. Yes. Uh, with regards to competition, we would say that our first competitor would be the Excel sheet and Intuition. So this is the combination that the small service founders uh, actually use. But when we speak about the tools that they are most likely to migrate, so this would be uh, the Soho, QuickBooks, or Xero, depending on the company location, because if we speak about the Canada, it's most likely to be Xero since uh, the closer ties to American market. Uh, this often comes with the hiring of uh, accounting and when the company is having a little bit more of uh, bookkeeping. So we're trying to address a little bit different issue and we're trying to acquire a customer at a little bit earlier stage. And so we try to provide a little bit sec more sector specific functional within our app to get them on board a little bit early while they are still using the, uh, the spreadsheets. Thank you. I have a question. Where are you based in? Uh, we are based in Ukraine. So we're currently doing our initial incorporation. So we're looking for an Estonian IP for, for this moment, since we are more oriented towards European market. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any other questions to, from investors? I guess you covered more or less all. So thank you very much, Igor, for this speech. Great job. Uh, Daniel, as you wished, <laughs> here is Mopsy. Thanks, <laughs> super, super sweet. <laughs> Just satisfy the demand. Startup dog. So uh, coming back uh, to the most uh, exciting uh, part, I mean, the startup pitches, of course, uh, I want uh, to invite to pitch uh, Display Force company from Netherlands and uh, the head of BizDev, uh, Alex Nutrudinov. Alex? Yeah, hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you for this amazing opportunity. So let me please begin. Sure, don't forget to share your presentation, please. Yeah, sure. So just, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once again, I'm Alex. I'm a business development manager at DisplayForce.ai. Uh, this is a SaaS platform for hyper-personalized marketing and audience analytics at points of sales presented in 10 countries. So just yesterday, uh, there was a banner in a store that is now replaced with a screen. And the speed of this digital transformation is nearly 40%. This new infrastructure must bring maximum impact. Ma marketers and advertisers want to leverage performance marketing approaches powered by deep audience insights, actually exactly as, it has, as, they, have, as they have been doing this uh, in online. So, uh, we are enabling these cap capabilities for physical locations. So we may anonymously track more than 30 features, including appearance, gender, age, uh, if, even emotions, and of course, dwell time, the amount of time the customer actually communicates with the ad. This is very important for brands and media now. now. Uh, so I should say that our AI algorithms are top ranked by National Institute of Technology, and are completely GDPR compliant, GDPR and CCPA compliant. So we're all legal, it's all legal, because we do not gather, store, or transfer any personal information. Um, that's it. Uh, so, sorry, just, okay. So I would like to show you how uh, the values we offer to, for retails, retailers and other businesses through a few cases. So just imagine that the customer enters, enters the, uh, the store. Our uh, system recognizes her or him. And for example, 
he or she stands in front of a certain category of goods and uh, uh, but for some reason she decided not to not to buy it our uh, system will immediately uh, will immediately show the relevant content with the same product and it will literally literally be pursuing her in uh, throughout her customer journey it may also be be displayed in front of the cashier's desk or near the exit uh, that is how we actually eliminate the abandoned basket cases and we uplift uh, the sales for retailers by 42 percent depending on the category of goods so of course we may be in integrated with loyalty programs and uh, we will gather more data as they as customers actually uh, share this data with the with the stores uh, but uh, which is more important we will be able to make discounts and to show discount discounted goods on the screens uh, the third case is that we drastically enrich customer customers data so customer journey map social characteristics emotions reactions to the ad content attention to it um, the amount of time they've been communicating with it and all of this data uh, all of this data are easily available and very auctionable on with our programmatic module so from one window, you may actually manage uh, thousands of screens, thousands of marketing campaigns, and also uh, get all of this data and resell it to brands and media, just from one window. Um, so I would like to say what uh, about three values we offer. So once again, we, uh, we uplift the sales from five to 42%, depending on the category of goods. Uh, of course, we reduce uh, marketing costs and uh, and IT costs because we also may provide network health money monitoring in the same in the same window. And of, and by programmatic ad selling, we on average we show uh, new revenue streams of three thousand dollars per store in a month, depending on the business, of course. But that's on average. So uh, we have started in the fourth quarter of 2020. Uh, we already have 17 enterprise customers. As I've mentioned before, we are located, so we are already presented in 10 countries, in 1,000 locations, and with 4,049 touch points. So this is our geo. We're mainly focused on Europe. Uh, I mean, presented in Europe, but we are scaling fast. Uh, our business model is SaaS. We sell subscriptions from $5 to $50 per screen monthly. Uh, we are golden partners with uh, Intel of Intel and, DP, uh, and Microsoft. We are part of the biggest uh, the digital out of home association in America, DPAA. And 10 uh, channel and technology partners are, help, are helping us to scale on a $22 billion market. So on the left-hand side, you may see our alliance partners, software and hardware partners, integrators. And on the right-hand side, you may see our, our customers. So for example, recently we have launched uh, the pilot, we successfully launched the pilot with one Store Italian system integrator with a fashion retail major, with, uh, which has more than 800 sto stores across the world uh, with thousands of screens. And now we are expand, ex trying to expand and scale in Italy very fast. So this is our growth strategy. It won't take the fourth quarter of 2020. Uh, so we are targeted on 4,200 and let's, let's say 420K uh, by the end of this year. We want, I want to underline that um, the difference between CAC and L LTV are helping, uh, so it's helping us to uh, reinvest the revenues into the business and to, um, to test different hypotheses and right so we are 14 now so Serge Galef is our CEO and co-founder Artem Gimadiev is our co-founder and he's responsible for the strategy so we are in Amsterdam and Japan Breden he's a global retail advisor one of uh, the uh, one of so the the head managers of EMD it's, uh, the association of European retailers Mike Pinkowski is our inside sales advisor from Veeam. He has a team of 
more than 300 employees and their annual sales are more than 70, $700 million a year. I mean, yeah, annual sales. And Alexei Rekish is our uh, chief technical officer. So we're trying to raise a million US dollars where we have soft commitments close to that amount, but we are mostly interested in lead investor who will help us to scale in Europe and who will help us with our expertise. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex, for this presentation. And uh, I welcome investors uh, for questions. Uh, can, I, can I, oh, sorry, Daniel. So you raise your hand, go, please go ahead. No, all good. Go ahead. I just want to give a thumbs up for the presentation. <laughs> okay, then I'll go. Thanks, Alex, for the for the pitch. Um, you, you mentioned that you, you're having some commercial activities going on in Italy. Could you please expand on that? Yeah, sure. So I can't disclose about the um, uh, about the fashion retail major. Let me let me name it so. Uh, but the fact is that we are partnered with one store. This Integrate is working and has a contract with it. We have successfully pilot so launched a pilot with them, and we are scaling uh, through the whole chain. I mean, with the, with the whole chain in every store. Okay, that that's a supermarket without mentioning the name. I say fashion, fashion retail. Fashion, okay, okay, good. Yeah, what kind of supermarket can be in, in uh, Italy? Fashion, of course. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, any other questions to Alex? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, I, I have a question. This is Oscar. Um, in terms of route to market, because um, I think Yop is the person, yeah. Uh, I presume uh, the I think he's a co co-founder. I presume he's opening up a lot of doors. Is that correct? Absolutely, that's it. I mean, he's working on, on the network with a lot of retail chains in Europe, for example, with Ahold, and so he actually has been working with Ahold, and he helped us to scale with uh, FMCG uh, and grocery retail chains. Um, maybe this is a question on one one on one, but uh, to really take this to the next level, uh, what what do you have to show? What what kind of KPIs you need to really show for to get an adoption from from the brick and mortar stores? Um, um, that's a really good question. Uh, I, but uh, let me say this. Uh, I'm not sure how to answer. I'm sorry. It's better okay. to uh, how to answer. I, I, I suggest ex to ex uh, exchanging the contacts and to have a conversation okay. after the, after the, after this. Oh, Understood. Maybe Thank I will you. help Alex a little bit. Uh, so uh, both of the founders are on an uh, offline meeting with Invest right now. And uh, uh, Alex is a head of this dev, uh, so these questions should be easily uh, answered by founders, but uh, unfortunately there was the uh, schedule gap in the calendar and uh, they couldn't join the call, so they will definitely be able to uh, answer this question if they were here. Yeah, we have, <clears throat> we, I had to uh, be a substitution and the news was only a couple of days before now. So no worries, Alex. You are very good substitution. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar, for your question. Gormak, I remember you also had questions. Yeah, hi, Alex. Um, so my question is um, regarding the hardware. Is this a third-party solution, or are you doing this in-house? And and then linked to that, could could you discuss or elaborate a little on the um, sales cycle yeah sure so most of our sales are going through channel partners nearly 80 percent percent so this year we have uh, so in february we have we have started to develop uh, the, the so-called display for force box where we have our solution pre-installed it's like a small device with a camera with a lan cable i mean the lan input in it and uh so but it has all of the uh all of the features included. You only need to turn on the subscription. The idea is that we do not uh, 
get anything of that. It's it's included in the subscription. That's how we um, cut the deployment uh, time from two from one to two months to one day to just one day. So it's the it's the answer about the hardware. So yes, we ha we are just it's like infrastructure as a solution uh, type. It's for small and medium businesses that don't have infrastructure yet. Us, yes, have I answered? Yeah, but I see this, yeah. Sorry. If we have time, I would also pose a last question maybe. Yeah, cool, thanks. Um, thanks, Alex, for the presentation. Uh, I have a question regarding the screens or the content showed on the screens. So I, as if I understand it correctly, you're selling your solution to the stores, right? Um, but who puts the content on the screens? Is it the brands that that are advertising? Are they competing for the for the space, or is it predominantly the brick and mortar store which just displays all its offers it has on the screen, or how does it work? Yeah, sure. So first of all, uh, so if the retail chain has their own marketing department, they may be responsible for that. Second of all, if they want, they may they may include right just in uh in on the platform they may switch on the programmatic module which will help to uh medias and brands to put their ads on the screen so that's how we actually get new revenue streams for the stores and uh, for for the for retailers and i should mention that this store as media is the uh, very is a very sound trend right now and every, so the trend which uh that everybody's following that's how, and we help to transform into store as media. Thank you. Did it answer your okay. question, Daniel? Yeah. Okay, good. Alex, thank you very much for your pitch. Uh, you made it very well. Thank you. Thank and, you, everyone. Uh, yeah. Uh, we are switching now to another startup. So the startup is from uh, Ireland, Heaven 11, and the founder, Vladimir Filipov. Vladimir, please, your turn. Um, hello, uh, uh, my name is Vladimir Filipov and I'm a uh, founder of uh, Heaven Eleven, the Irish company. So uh, uh, let me share my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, so, you can make it uh, bigger, the whole presentation. Oh, no, it's in PDF, so it's okay like this. All right. So. Uh, Today I'm presenting an Irish product, Heaven11, uh, which is a SaaS platform to facilitate and automate music copyright licensing and royalty distribution processes for rights management organizations. So, uh, uh, unlike many other industries, the uh, music industry have ignored the arrival of digital era 20 years ago, and that was significantly hit by the challenges caused by lack of appropriate technical solutions and practices that are required uh, to manage online licenses and royalty distributions. Here you see the cash flow scheme of music industry and these large blue dots, which uh, dollar signs shows where money are leaking and industry fails. Um, the uh, Heaven 11 uh, platform came up with a solution that helps creators and right holders to see the big picture and manage their business at scale. Our SaaS platform have been tested and proved to work with more than 100 customers up until now uh, from more than 30 countries so far. Uh, the, uh, uh, meanwhile, only the uh, online music streaming business have shown growth of 22% in 2020 and uh, expected to grow even more up to 70% altogether from 11 to 19 billion by 2022. As per analysis of Goldman Sachs, uh, the online music business will grow up to 130 billion by 2030, though our experience says that it may actually meet that target somewhere half the way. And new subscribers, new access points, rising subscription tires and income share tires, uh, this, all this sim stimulates the growth of the industry very much. The um, uh, more orders, more streaming services, more listeners, uh, this is kind of a mantra that being sung by the industry uh, now, and all these factors are influencing on the growth of the industry turnover significantly. The, uh, uh, we have some entertaining video here, which could be shown afterwards and during a Q&A session if, uh, if needed. The, uh, 
there are several key points uh, and problems uh, as, for example, millions of disputes are outdated ownership data, to mention a few, which haven't eleven successfully resolved with a dispute resolution table or machine readable agreements, technologies which we have implemented, unlocking and paid royalty ports and increasing customers' revenue. The uh, our business model is pretty much simple. We take one to three percent from every, every transaction we process several times, multiplying our revenue. Uh, the uh, up until now, having won position number one uh, as a processing hub in Russia and CS country where we started, Heaven Eleven is on its way to extend the uh, operation into emerging markets as Africa, India, China, Southeast Asia. In the meantime, we're soliciting deals with large organizations and online service providers to explore our opportunity to swiftly gain customer base due to a lack of solution in the regions. Uh, so uh, here are some numbers. In 2020, we processed uh, reports for about 1.5 million euro for, for 150 publishers and received over 50,000 euro uh, as a processing fee. And we have uh, extensive ongoing negotiations with new clients and investments uh, will help us to extend our team, upgrade our platform to scale up the business swiftly. Our target to process about half a billion euro worth transactions uh, and earn approximately 15 million euro uh, as a revenue by 2024, servicing collective management organizations and music publishers. We do also have some strategic partners which uh, make us confident that we can meet these tar targets and uh, so, uh, I can elaborate on this uh, during Q&A session as well. So the, uh, despite the uh, business is very complicated and requires complex technical solution, uh, an exceptional expertise, there's still some competition and Heaven11 is one of very few companies in the world who provide such a service. Our competitors uh, have some similarities with us, but there are some killer features we have uh, that let us overtake our computers and makes us outstanding. You can see it on the, our comparison chart. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we have a strong team of industry, industry professionals, experts and veterans that opens the doors create advantages and push that project up to success. Uh, so you can see some of them here, and I can uh, also give more information on that later on. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. You are perfectly in time, and uh, I want to give the word to investors. So who wants to ask questions about Heaven 11? Yeah, Daniel, it was another sign on your was just a clapping again. Uh, <laughs> you are so sweet to you <laughs> put this and clapping when you hear good pitches. But do you have question? Um, yeah, I still have to wrap my mind around the whole industry because I'm not as familiar with it. But my question would be, uh, what is your exact go to market strategy? How do you try to uh, or how do you convince all these publishers? Uh, Etc. And where do you see bottlenecks on your way to your global expansion? Also, so the, uh, basically, uh, despite uh, we've been announced as a startup, we uh, we came to that point through the years. So first, the technology was used uh, internally for our other companies, and up until now, we went uh, from the bottom to the top. Uh, we're starting approaching the market from the top. In the world, there are uh, 239 uh, collection management organizations. Now we already have an agreement signed with five of those. And if you see on our financial roadmap, we expect to have 10. Five of them already executed agreement with us and we are in the process of onboarding. Uh, started from there, we're gonna roll this down to the uh, down the hill because collection management organizations uniting all the publishers within regions. So once we're onboarding collection management organizations, they're going to invite their members, which will uh, we will upsell our, our service. So we practically, setting up same very service multiple times first the collection management organization processing their transaction then we go at the uh, level down to publishers and then level down to writers so that's how we multiply our customers database and uh upselling our product thanks that makes it very clear thanks Vladimir. thank you daniel any other questions from investor side cormac mateo Oscar already knows uh, their project quite well, but maybe also has some questions. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I, th I think um, just 
it's it's not necessarily a question. Well, it is kind of like a question for Vladimir to uh, uh, simplify because music is quite complex. Uh, uh, but is it correct to say that you're you created the pipeline of the industry, the 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 backbone infrastructure? Is that, okay. that, that that's absolutely correct? Because uh, as I mentioned in the beginning. The industry did uh, have uh, that type of infrastructure. They were uh, expecting that the physical media will exist for ages, but it uh, and they just how somehow lost this corner where it all have changed. And the uh, it was more or less developed from the user side. So the platforms like Apple, YouTube, Amazon Music, uh, Google, uh, Spotify appeared. So and music started to be widely used in online. Uh, uh area while from the back end uh, from the administration and royalty distribution side there was absolutely uh, industry was absolutely not prepared for that and it was getting more and more complex and uh uh up as up, uh, up until now the uh, most recent legal uh, cha- uh kind of changes let's say in the european union is article 17 on in the us and the mma acts oblige all the parties who are using the content to properly uh, recognize and report usages. And uh, from the most recent events, for example, Google has been just fined for half a billion by the French government just a few weeks ago because they didn't pay for use of uh, literature content, literature rights for the journalists from France who published their uh, their, uh, kind of articles and Google just used them without license. So, and the industry practically has no solution how to properly uh, introduce those licenses to Google. And it's just a corner store and it's just a very necessary, very timely solution, uh, which because the issue scales up uh, like a snowball very fast. And uh, we are practically coming up with a framework how to arrange that in, in the proper modern way. Oscar, are you satisfied with this comment? Yes, yes, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the question and thank you, Vladimir, for the presentation. Thank you. You can stop screen sharing. And yeah, right now I want to give uh, the word to the startup from Switzerland, Profi Circle, and uh, the CTO of Profi Circle, Christian Buza. Christian, are you here? I don't hear you, Christian. Hi, I am here. Thank you for the introduction. Great. Right now I hear you well and see you well and see your presentation. So please move on. Thank you. Uh, So we are ProfiCircle, the first business to business market network for the commercial equipment industry. And I'm here to share with you why our uniquely experienced team can turn this as yet untouched opportunity into the next unicorn company. Every day, thousands of commercial equipment acquisitions start around the world. It's a huge market, and this is only expected to grow. The process is similar to furnishing a home, and almost all equipment acquisitions are made in cash, unfortunately. Imagine if we all had to buy cars and houses in cash without financing options. The problem is that too much time is wasted in creating requests for proposals, meetings, calls, and emails with several suppliers and potential uh, service providers. The buyer has limited access to leasing or renting, and is very challenging to obtain credit insurance. On the other hand, sellers cannot internationalize quickly, and sales cycles are incredibly long. ProfiCircle solves these market inefficiencies, helping buyers and sellers to buy and sell at the right at the right equipment at the right time and at the right price buyers save up to 80% of their time and about 20% of the cost and thanks to our embedded financing solutions buyers can benefit from 100% full service leasing we help sellers scale to new markets and create connections with local service providers without having local dealers so How does this work? It's simple. The buyer specifies its need in a request for proposal in a web form. The platform selects suitable suppliers. And after an auction, 
the buyer selects the best offer in a comparative table and project execution starts in just days instead of months. Everything is centralized on one platform from web conference tools and digital signature to payments. Our business model consists in three revenue streams, commission from every transaction, commission from embedded finance and insurance, and monthly subscriptions from the sellers. Currently, we have penetrated Romania and have had pre-launch solid transactions. Our goal is to implement ourselves within the DAC region, scale in Europe, and then roll out overseas. Our early traction has shown uh, some very encouraging results. We had about 61 transactions that, that have been performed on our platform with uh, a GMV of about $700,000. Our stickiness confirms our growth as well. Sellers use the pl platform daily, their clients return on the platform with new orders, periodically acquire spare parts or maintenance, but overall, the most important is that our stickiness is linked to solid platform network effects. Right now, there is no other solution in the market like ProfiCircle. We are unique in several ways, but the most important is proposing different embedded financing solutions. The global potential revenue is up to 27 billion, given ProfiCircle's revenue streams. The market keeps growing, more than 400 million SMEs in the world and above 235,000 uh, producers and service providers. The milestone we have, uh, we will achieve, will convert itself in about 44 million in, 20, uh, in 2024, with more than 140 employees and the margin of 73% of the gross. Today, we are raising uh, 1.2 million to surf on our positive initial tra traction and to start and accelerate our growth in the DAC region. We serve two countries and we are looking to do many more in the coming months. Today, we are 18 full-time employees with different backgrounds, from uh, sales directors to advisors uh, from the biggest uh, service provider in the industry. Uh, and together with my co-founder, Edward, who's also here present, um, we want to thank you for your attention and your interest in helping this fantastic team become the leading digital platform in our industry. Thank you, Christian, for your presentation. Great job again and in good timing. And uh, right now, space uh, for the Q&A. I see Eduard Daniluc. Daniliuc uh, also unmuted his co-founder at Profit Circle. So please, investors, your questions. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Hi, just out of curiosity, what are your backgrounds? How did you come up with the idea? Uh, my background, I uh, have experience 15 years in domain and I was before working like a uh, dealer for many uh, suppliers and with many, many customers in uh, European uh, countries. And uh, uh, part of my colleagues also have experience in industry. Was there a specific pain that you felt when you were operating in the industry beforehand? So, sorry, I, I uh, uh, can't understand your question. Can you repeat? Uh, maybe you elaborate a little bit more, Edward, on um, uh, what is your industry expertise or why exactly this uh, idea? What is the need that you've seen? Okay, in the last uh, last years, uh, we work with uh, like in offline ways, and uh, client today in order to furnish their uh, commercial spaces like a shop, like a warehouse, or like a office space, they need to contact several suppliers. Uh, discuss, I mean, have many meetings, uh, offline meetings, uh, negotiations, and so on. And uh, uh, also, uh, most of the customer need to work with, with local dealers, because uh, directly with the producers is uh, very difficult for a small amount. 
we talk in special about small and medium business. And uh, according to uh, our experience and what we uh, do right now, uh, the customers are very happy to send one request uh, using our platform and receive uh, in several days uh, several offers. Uh, also, we integrate in our platform uh, all of uh, services. The customer can select several suppliers and customers send. Um, sorry, I, I'm at, I'm live outside of, of city and uh, have some. Um, in the customers can uh, come to our platform to find suppliers, find uh, subcontractors all in one place, and can also finance uh, their acquisition. Uh, uh, our competition today is uh, offline sellers, but all of them, uh, most of them will become our partners because we help uh, suppliers to sell outside of their, their countries uh, without to have a physical dealership. They can, uh, our platform can be like an e-dealer solution. Is it clear now, Cormac? Yeah, I, I guess you answered the question. Thank you very much, Eduard and Christian. And you can follow up later on with the Q&A privately. And uh, well, uh, we expected uh, one more startup uh, today, a resumer uh, in the HR sector. Uh, but uh, due to technical problems, they could not join the pitch session, unfortunately. So I'm sure that they will appear in one of the next ones. Uh, but um, just a reminder that I will send to each and every investor the follow-up email right now after we finish uh, with all the pitch decks, startup profiles on in mind. And uh, I will remind you to give your feedback um, and uh, tell me with whom of the founders you would like to connect for the follow-up. And before we finish, I, I respect your time and know that everyone is dreaming to get a piece of ice or put the head on the fridge. Uh, but uh, just before we finish, maybe um, each uh, investor can give your advice uh, to the founders. So the next time that they will pitch to investors, we have seen a lot of different pitches today. What is the most important that maybe you were missing today in their pitches, uh, or uh, maybe that could enrich the pitch and help you to understand, to uh, uh, make uh, the decision if you are interested or not, potentially a little bit faster. So how to pitch to investors better? Who wants to start? Hey, don't be so shy. Uh, I'll, I'll make a comment uh, and this is, I, I actually don't have advice for them, but I must say this, um, this crop of, um, of companies uh, overall presented very well. Um, and uh, so it was, uh, it was a great job by, by all of them. Oh, Oscar, thank you. So, and, and if nothing works out, um, for, for each of the companies from this uh, shark tank, uh, I would not be discouraged because uh, you just have to, it's, it's the right place, right time also in terms of receiving money. So um, don't be discouraged. Yeah, it's definitely a good point. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Oscar, for this uh, feedback. I'm sure that it is very encouraging for many of the guys. Uh, Daniel, uh, it seems that you are saying something or not. I wasn't saying anything, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, I will say something. So uh, I just want to say thank you, first of all, for all the pitches. I think it's really great that you're here and that you're just, yeah, uh, also have the guts to uh, be on a live stream and pitch. First of all, thanks a lot. Uh, I'll also, I wouldn't say there's anything specifically on these pitches I saw that I was I know that was missing for me, uh, but something maybe that you can uh, take advantage of is uh, what we've seen or what I've seen quite recently and uh, quite often uh, that maybe you can be uh, you can get an, an advantage at is be very, very specific on the problem and show that to be to frame it very badly in a way that it's really there. So uh, quite often we've seen not here. I have to stress this. Uh, that it's a great solution, it's super shiny and everything, but we don't know if the, if the problem is really there. 
So uh, really try to convey to also investors, but also it's super helpful for yourself to understand the customers better and to convey why the problem is there and how your solution specifically solves this problem. And where does the customer or your presumed customer show this problem? What kind of situation is it? And this is a thing that I've seen missing in some sort in the last couple of days, uh, I noticed, uh, for some pictures I saw. Uh, so, uh, but not here, uh, just something maybe for you to get, get an advantage at, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. And it was very sweet of you to underline that not here, <laughs> not here. And uh, the point is uh, very reasonable indeed. Uh, just a clarifying questions, uh, a question, um, when a founders elaborate on traction, doesn't it prove by itself that the problem exists? if they have already some sales and some traction. It's a question, Daniel. Uh, was it for me? Yes, yes. Okay, sorry. I, will, I just don't want to talk all the time. So I also want to provide the stage with some other others. But I think it's it very much depends. It's, it's not a good answer, but it very much depends. So. Um, also on your stage of the company, whether you're also on the technicalities, is, is your product super uh, super technical, also on, on the sales cycles, etc. So it's it's really hard to say. So I'm sorry I can't provide any definite answer. I think it's just important to see. Uh, yeah, also to, to get us to make a step back, I think uh, you can frame traction also in very different terms. So uh, for us, at least, I'm not sure if it applies to everyone, but we don't necessarily need to see uh, revenue in the first place. So traction can be very is very is a very broad term. So do you have a very long waiting list because you're not ready yet to sell? Um, that that's also super interesting. Do we, yeah, do we, do you have a mailing list? Uh, this might also suffice. So. It very much depends. Sorry to not give a clear answer on this. That's at least my view. No, no, Daniel, thank you very much for elaborating on that because indeed there is uh, this belief that if you have traction, then by default, uh, the problem is proven and uh, uh, that exists uh, and you don't have uh, to prove it somehow else or even underline it. Uh, it's, I think it's very useful that you underline the fact that um, even if you have sales, or especially if you don't have sales, don't forget to expose the problem and uh, the uh, volume of the problem, uh, the weight of it. Uh, so very good. Thank you very much. And uh, maybe yes. just, sorry. Someone else says something? I'm not sure. Uh, just to add on uh, this point, uh, maybe if you don't necessarily have traction in terms of revenue yet, uh, what you should make very, very clear then is your go-to-market strategy. So how do you convince your customers to buy your product apart from, so I would say something like Google ads, Facebook ads, whatever suffices because it, yeah, it's very generic. So I really want, or I would love to see some passion and also very clear strategy and very step-by-step. -step. Do you have any key partnerships you plan to make? This, this kind of thing is also interesting, yeah. Oh, thank you, Daniel. I would not be able to uh, explain it better. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, Cormac and Matteo, would you like to add something, some advice? Yeah, no, just, just to go a bit against what Daniel said. Sorry, Daniel, but uh, for, for startups that are raising especially Series A, it's uh, a good slide and traction would be appreciated. But uh, overall, for the quality of the pitches today, I really think that um, it set it apart and uh, they were very clear. So thank you very much to the founders who, who showed uh, their solutions. Um, overall, the format five plus Q&A was uh, well organized and uh, really appreciated. Oh, my heart is melting. Uh, and it is not because of the uh, hot weather. Thank you very much, Matteo, for these words. Um, Cormac. Yeah, no, I thought the, the pitches were excellent. I uh, will elaborate and everyone was in time. So that's really appreciated. And um, I thought the, the decks put together were quite comprehensive. Yes, maybe some of them were lacking some of the traction metrics, um, but yeah, I mean, given the time constraints, um, it's, it's quite natural that not, not all, not everything was covered in them. Um, just maybe for, 
I, I did have trouble following um, Vladimir of Heaven Eleven. Um, it, maybe it was he was too fast or something, but maybe he could slow down a little bit. But I mean, I thought overall the presentations were excellent. Cormac, thanks a lot for this advice. And I think Vladimir will uh, also take it into the consideration and uh, improve even better for the next time. And um, yeah. Uh, Nelly, just so, yeah. sorry, uh, just if I can, um, because you posed a question uh, in terms of the traction, does it mean that they're solving a problem? Uh, not, not hunt, well, the, the probability uh, uh, increases that they're solving a problem uh, it, it increases with more traction. That's, so that's, that's obvious. But initial traction and the game that we play, at least the, at, at this stage, and a lot of these companies were, are at this stage that we play, um, uh, initial traction does not mean that you, 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 you have, uh, let's say, a business because uh, the risk of, the, of this stage is that the initial traction tricks you. So initial traction does not mean you're bound to have mass adoption. So that's our job to actually filter out and determine uh, uh, the probabilities of them, of these companies going to the next level. That is really a strong point. Thanks a lot. Indeed, initial traction does not mean mass adoption. So that they also should approve the scalability uh, potential. Uh, so that uh, they can uh, scale not only from technical perspective, but that, that there is uh, still a lot of demand in future. Uh, I hope that uh, all these pieces of advice will be digested in a right way uh, by founders and uh, implemented for future. And um, I want to say one more time, thank you very much for the investors who were there. And guys, just imagine how impassioned founders are after these sessions to get some uh, feedback or follow-up. So when I send you the email, please uh, take your time, not today, of course, but maybe tomorrow to review pitches and let me know uh, with whom we can introduce you to. And um, thank you very much for the founders. For some of you, it was uh, uh, really the first uh, public pitch to investors. And I know how nervous you were. So you overcame it and uh, did a really great job. I'm proud of all of you. Thank you very much, guys, uh, for participating and looking forward to see you on the next sessions. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Good evening.